really happens to a lot of people, a lot of people. It comes from a part of the brain called the amygdala. Now the amygdala is very small and it's shaped like an almond, it's at the back of the brain. And the amygdala's job is to warn you of danger and keep you safe. So really it's kind of like your own fierce warrior there to protect you. The problem is that the amygdala doesn't really think too hard about whether or not there really is danger or whether or not something actually is a threat. As soon as it thinks that there might be something that could hurt you, it swings into action. Now, the problem with that is when it swings into action, it surges your body with a special body fuel to make you strong, fast and powerful, kind of like a superhero. Now that is fantastic if there is something that you need to get out of the way of or, or if you need to run for your life. That's the special body fuel is exactly what you need. But if your amygdala has got it wrong, and all of our amygdalas get it wrong sometimes, and it's telling you that there's something dangerous but there actually isn't, what happens is that special body fuel builds up. That's when you get all of the awful physical feelings that come with anxiety. So anxiety is from a really strong, healthy brain that is trying to protect you. But the problem is it's being a little too overprotective. One of the things that can really help with anxiety and help you to be the boss of your brain again is to understand what's going on in your body when you're feeling anxious because those feelings that come with anxiety can feel awful and they can feel quite scary if you don't know where they're coming from. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about. So when your amygdala thinks that there is something it needs to protect you from and has surged your body with this special body fuel, now the first thing that special body fuel does is it changes your breathing from slow, strong, deep breaths, probably like you're breathing now, to short, shallow breaths. And it does this because it kind of, it's like your brain saying to your body, hey body, stop using up the oxygen on strong, deep breaths. We want to send that oxygen to the rest of the body and, and the arms and legs in case it needs to fight the danger or run from the danger. So what happens when you do short, sharp breathing is the oxygen in your body builds up. Oxygen is the air that, in the air that we breathe and the carbon dioxide drops. The carbon dioxide is usually what we breathe out. But we need the oxygen and carbon dioxide to be at the right levels because when the carbon dioxide drops, that's when we can feel a bit dizzy and a bit confused. So even though the breathing, the short, sharp breathing is for a really good reason, if we don't have to fight or flight, it can make us feel dizzy or confused. The other thing that happens is your heart starts to beat really fast and that's to get all of the special body fuel around your body. Now for you, that can feel like your heart is about to pound out of your chest, which can be really scary, but there's actually nothing to worry about. Hearts know exactly what they're doing. So when your heart is beating really fast, it's because it's trying to get that special body fuel around to your muscles to make you stronger and faster and more powerful. Now the other thing that can happen is your body tries to keep itself cool, to cool itself down in case it does need to fight or flee. And the way your body cools itself down is by sweating. So when anxiety hits, you might start to feel a bit sweaty or a bit clammy. Now, the other thing that happens is the amygdala is also in charge of your emotions. So when you're anxious, you can feel your emotions can be at high volume so you can feel like you just want to burst into tears or you might feel really, really angry, even though there's nothing to be sad or angry about. That's okay. It's because your amygdala is really switched on and working really hard to protect you from whatever it thinks it needs to protect you from, which means that your emotions will also be working hard. Now, the other thing that happens is anything in your body that isn't needed in the moment to for your survival will shut down and one of those things is digestion and digestion is the way we get the nutrients from the food that we eat but it's okay because it won't stay shut down for too long now when your digestion shuts down 
it might make you feel a bit sick in the tummy, it might give you a, a, a bit of a dry mouth. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just your body, your body doing what bodies do when they're trying to keep you safe. But it can make you feel like you're going to vomit and it can make you feel, it can give you butterflies and make you feel sick in the tummy. But again, that's nothing to worry about. It's, your, it's part of what your body's doing to try to keep you safe. Now, even though this is all happening for a really good reason, you want to be able to stop it if there is nothing to fight or flee. So the idea is you have to be the boss of your brain. Because the problem is sometimes your amygdala tries to take over and, and it just keeps warning you of danger even when there isn't any there. What you need to do is take charge again. And that way it's kind of like saying to your amygdala, it's okay, we've got this, there's nothing to worry about here, so stop surging us with special body fuel because we do not need it and it's just making us feel bad. Now, do you know the best way to be the boss of your brain is strong, deep breathing. Because remember, the thing that started this whole chain reaction of physical feelings is short, sharp breathing. So when you do strong, deep breaths, it actually starts to switch off that surge of special body fuel, which slowly starts to switch off all of the physical things that you're feeling that are making you feel anxious and awful. Strong, deep breathing is like a lullaby for your brain. Brains absolutely love it. Now, there's a teeny tiny problem because when you're in the middle of anxiety, when your brain's really busy thinking it needs to protect you and when you're feeling anxious and whatever that feels like to you, it might feel like butterflies or a, a pounding heavy heart or it might you might feel sick in the tummy, whatever your anxiety feels like for you, when you're doing that, it's really hard to remember strong, deep breathing. And that's because your brain is so busy doing other things. So what you need to do is to teach your brain how to do strong, deep breaths when it's calm. And it's like anything, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes and the more automatic it, it becomes for you. So if you can practice strong, deep breathing every day when you're calm for a few minutes a day, that is teaching your brain what to do when you're anxious. And before too long, even when you're feeling anxious, you'll be able to switch on your strong, deep breathing. Now, scientists know strong, deep breathing works because they can see what it does. They can see what strong, deep breathing does to your brain and your body. So it really does work. You don't even need to believe it works. It just will. The main thing is that you need to be able to switch it on. So if you can practice strong, deep breathing for a couple of minutes a day, that's going to really help you be the boss of your brain when you're feeling anxious. And remember, it's a way to, the more you do it, the more you're strengthening your brain against anxiety. And the more you will be able to, when you're feeling anxious, calm your brain down and be the boss of your brain again.